Hello guys and welcome to Around the Scene, brought to you by Playing With Rockets. We're so happy to have you guys here with us. This is episode 8. I am one of your hosts, PWR Ryan, and joining me today is the Rocket League professor himself. We've got Kevpert with us. How you doing, man? Hello. Glad to be here. Uh, I'm doing great today. How do, you, how do you feel about that intro? Was that good? Did I do you justice? It was a solid intro, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, but guys, if you didn't know, this is episode 8 of Around the Scene. We're here every Wednesday for you to get your fix on all things Rocket League. If you like this, please consider giving us a follow or toss us a sub here on Twitch. Or consider kicking us a buck over on Patreon.com slash Playing With Rockets. Uh, we get, thank you guys for joining us. Feel free to talk and all that stuff in chat. We are going to be ignoring you guys largely because we want to make a polished podcast. This is just a live recording. Um, so feel free to discuss. Uh, but we want to make this clean for those watching later on YouTube. Um, shout out to our Patreon sponsors for the month of May. We got Father of Five and Jonesy. We thank you them very much for that. Um, so you, you're feeling good right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. We're, gonna, we're just going to roll right into it. How do you feel about that? Yeah, sounds good. All right, we're gonna, go, about. we're gonna go right into the news segment, guys. We got three items for you guys. It's a lot of news. Um, they're they're three, but they're big. <laughs> uh, first, we're gonna talk about the promo relegation tournaments that happened this past weekend. We're gonna do a little bit of recap on those. Uh, so for those of you who didn't know, in North, we're gonna talk about North America. Then we'll go to EU. For North America, the peeps and the birds and the bees. Uh, the two RLRS teams both got promoted to RLCS, which means that Evil Geniuses and Splice have been relegated to the RLRS. Um, were you were you surprised by that at all, Kev? Um, as for the the tournament itself, no. But for Evil Geniuses to be in there, that was a big shock. I'll have to say. Yeah, I like. I don't know that it was a shock to me, but it was like it was one of those like feels bad man kind of things. Because, like, Drippe traveled all the way over here and to get immediately relegated, like, ever since he joined the OCE Pro scene, he's been in the championship every single time. And so he transfers over here expecting he might be able to do the same thing, but instead he's dropping to essentially the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a big shame because I, I, I've loved Dirt Bay's game for a long time. He comes as the uh, the number one most outstanding player from OCE. And to find... Well, I, I know he was looking for a situation where he felt like he could get that visa sponsorship. He could mm -hmm. settle down with a big org, nice contract. Yeah. And for that to be up in the air now is a, definitely a feels bad, man. Yeah, it definitely like it sucks so much because like... It just kind of makes you wonder of like what's gonna happen here for him. Like, is he the one who's possibly on the chopping block here, or is it corrupted G or classics possibly? Like, mm -hmm. and for what I've seen from a lot of people, they would take they would remove classics or corrupted G over Drip A. So I'm hoping that maybe Evil Geniuses see it the same way. They don't seem like they're gonna run out of the scene, so that's good at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's a little interesting because we haven't really seen any org drop down and really keep their roster aside mm -hmm. from complexity. We've seen like Counter Logic Gaming, that team just disbanded. Uh, that Rogue team uh, that went down with Jacob and Joro and Sis, they disbanded. Yeah, uh, and like these are like fast disbands too. Like they don't mm -hmm. even really take long to think about it. They're just like, no, we're not doing RLRS, and they're right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like, this ain't for us, man. We're seeing you later uh right, right. but so for evil geniuses it's a bit of surprise um i'm kind of sad for those guys i hope that um the i hope they've got some solid plans in place um and i'm hoping that uh there still is a place for drip a on that team i think he still is a solid player like i think he's done so well um, and I was a little worried for him in the transition from regions because you're going from top dog over here to now you're kind of like middle of the pack, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, that was one of my worries for him. Um, but I think he's done, he's done pretty well. He's taken the transition pretty well. And I know that like he had visa issues and stuff. So like, who knows like how often he's actually like been in the same area playing with them like they were supposed to. Right. Yeah, I really do hope that they stick together. 
Uh, so I think there's a lot of room for improvement, uh, a lot of work that fireworks can do. He's one of the, the few dedicated coaches that is like a full-time position as a coach. Yeah. Uh, I think those players are quite malleable to his instruction. So it's all about what fireworks can bring to the table and improve them tactically and yeah. uh, see what sort of change they can get so before you, they so start. You, so you think it's going to be more on fireworks here to kind of help bring them to that next level again? I think so. I think... Fireworks will be looking at themselves and say, hey, you know, maybe I didn't bring what I needed to the table. I have to improve as a coach. Uh, we see with the birds and the bees and the peeps. And uh, before that, Space Station Gaming, these teams have brought, I think, a newer style to RLCS that is uh, at odds with the, the classic meta. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you just, on that. And the, the thing that they've brought is... Uh, they, they're asking a question of these pro teams. How do you break down a compact team? And yeah. when I watched Evil Geniuses play the peeps, Evil Geniuses didn't have any answers. They try to get in their faces, like the you know the casters would say, go for those demo plays. They get stretched too far wide, they overcommit, yeah. and the peeps are gone and they're attacking. So that's something fireworks can take a look at and say, hey, you know, how do we how do we play against those kind of teams? They didn't have any answers the whole season. Yeah. Well, and that was like the other thing too is like I you, like you're right. These RLRS teams are bringing a lot of new stuff to the table for these RLCS teams to think about. Um, and one of the things I've seen brought up time and time again through like interviews and stuff is just that um, the RLRS players play at a much faster speed than what some of these RLCS teams are used to. These RLCS mm -hmm. teams like they play they play a very solid game. But I, I don't know if they're going for like kind of the speed style that some of the RLRS teams tend to go for. Yeah, absolutely. These RLRS teams, because uh, I've been contemporaries with a, a few of these guys. It's really cool to see them, like guys like World Is. Yeah. Uh, and Sipical and all these guys doing so well. Uh, they push the transition so fast. And before they lose the ball, they're already thinking about you know, where, how do we need to position? Yeah, what's what's and, our next move in this scenario? Right. And the mechanical aspect they bring is insane. You got guys like Rettles. These guys are the top of their ones game. Uh, AXB, a super, super clever player. Like, all yeah. these different players just bring their own uh, their own unique flavor to RLCS. And yeah, and I'm like... Definitely I'm, disrupting, yeah. Uh, yeah, and like that's the cool thing is like I'm actually excited about it. I know that like I'm happy to see the um, guard of old stick around, but I'm also happy to see this change that we're getting, this new breath of fresh air in RLCS. Like it makes me happy to see like, okay, we've got three RLRS teams coming in this next season. Like I know that Space Station Gaming isn't RLRS anymore, but I still like. That's where they came from. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they came from all this. And so to see three brand new teams among these teams that have just kind of been here for a while now, uh, I'm, I'm just really excited to see what changes we can expect in that. Um, I do want to pivot for a sec, though. Splice, were you surprised at all by them getting relegated? No, I had them in last place before the season started. Yeah, it's kind of where they ended up. <laughs> no, and like, I, like that was my thing too. Is like, I'm, I'm one of those people who I was like, I didn't see Splice doing anything that was going to surprise me this season. Um, mm -hmm. They weren't anybody that I was like, oh, Splice, they're gonna just knock some socks off. Like, no, I mean, like, I kind of had them at the bottom too, and I still have yet to meet anybody who is one of the people who is like, yeah, Splice all the way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I, they, they did not. Yeah, they didn't do so hot. Um, yeah. I think one of their issues has been. Uh, I think it stemmed from season five. So just go back two seasons. Yeah, they did not. Season four, they didn't make RLS, um, RLCS or RLRS, which was yeah. a big surprise because that was the season where RLS was established. Mm -hmm. um, and they made a super team with Dude of the Nose, who was an established rank S player. Jay Wismon as well, who was playing with um, Lathamir back then. Yeah. And Karma, which was a really, really powerful team. They didn't get challenged. They got into RLRS. Yeah, they, they got into out. RLRS the oh, yeah. first time, like, relatively... Or that second time, like, relatively easy. Mm-hmm. But they dropped out, and then they had to do it all over again. Got into RLRS. This time, they performed really well. Mm -hmm. And then I think they took their foot off the pedal. Uh, they they didn't innovate in the way that they need to. 
yeah really bring i guess like not so mechanical players and uh like dude with a nose for instance mm-hmm. you have to have a system in place like a tactical system to succeed with those kind of players yeah so for splice they're they're of the mentality that like it's the same team like this team is what's gonna make it happen do you think they need a change um or do you well, think that it's just another one of those things where it's just you gotta kind of like work out the kinks here i think i think any team at that level you can always work out the kinks like mm-hmm. for me my personal philosophy has always been developing my players and i uh, completely understand where karma's coming from where she's saying you know, I'm loyal to my guys. Yeah, I, don't ditch I mean, them. she's, she's I super them. loyal. <laughs> right. People say loyal to a fault. I, I don't know. But yeah. I, I tend to disagree with that. I think those guys can improve a lot. I think there's definitely deficiencies in their games that they can, that uh, you can just tell from an eye test. Like, yeah. dude with the nose is mechanics. Uh, he doesn't have that creativity or the, the improvisational skill. That's something he needs to sit down and work on and develop. Yeah. Kind of just uh, be able, to, be able well. to react to very unique situations mm-hmm. and just kind of to handle uh, that nicely. Yeah. And I think they also have a coach too. And they started doing some, from what I've heard, they've done some tactical work, mm-hmm. but it's still very early and um, maybe not so much in context with the, the game that's played. Yeah. I mean... <sighs> I don't know. Like I'm, I'm kind of like split on it because I'm like, okay, uh, I, I'm generally of the mindset that yeah, you should stick together as a team, but I don't know. They're such a difficult team for me to really like give an answer to because they're so volatile. It feels like, like they can mm-hmm. like when they're hot, they are scalding. Like they will really take it to you. But when they're off, like, man, they're way off. And so it's just like, they need stability to that team more than anything. And I'm trying yeah. to, th- and like, my thought is like, okay, if I was to, I mean, I'm trying to think of like who I would even like put there who's a stable player, but I don't even know, to be honest. Um, if. Yeah, I kind I kind of see it as like a Kronobi situation where like they just need someone who's got experience behind them and is able to bring stability to the team in some fashion because that's their mm-hmm. biggest downfall is they have such a wide pitch for how they're gonna play each time you see them. Like, I mean, for league play they were just really off, and then here comes the promo relegation tournament and they just kicked it up to eleven, and it's like, what the heck? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> why couldn't you be like that all season? Right. Yeah, and so it's interesting. Yeah, they're they're just an interesting team, and like, I don't I don't have a whole lot of faith in them yet because they are so volatile. But once they kind of fix that up, I think that they can be a formidable force. But until then, they're just gonna be one of those teams that like, I'm not really gonna have faith in. Mm-hmm. And so I mean, that's this is kind of my thoughts on that. Um. But you, you got anything else you want to add to the NA side of things? Uh, I think Splice will struggle in RLRS, especially with teams like Plot Twist, uh, RBG. Uh, Splice have been making, they've been dropping results to yeah. very low level you teams. Think it's, you think it's going to continue here, though? I think so. Uh, if they have the right guidance, the right coaching, the right um, team management, they could, hey, we've, we've identified these weaknesses we're yeah we gotta fix them. a b and c right if they if they have that they could they could be back in all cs and succeeding yeah but without that you know do they have their awareness do they have the um the ability to be objective and analyze themselves that's yeah. up on that's up to them that's that's so, one of those we'll, questions we'll that's going to be up in the air <laughs> we'll have to wait until season eight to find that one out um but we're gonna move over to eu now um, that promo relegation recap. So the bricks are staying in RLCS. A lot of people really ecstatic about that one. And then complexity got promoted. So uh, Veloce is staying in RLRS, and Mouse Sports uh, is getting relegated. Um, I'm gonna say I was actually a little surprised by this result. I was fully expecting it. Like I predicted both NA and EU to be full swaps. 
Uh, both RLRs teams moving up, both RLCS teams moving down. Uh, pleased to see that the Bricks stuck in, um, but I definitely was expecting Veloce and Complexity. They're coming off great seasons. I was like, these guys are going to come in and do a good job. Uh, Mouse Sports, I wasn't surprised by them dropping in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, so just like all those fans who were pleased to see the bricks stay in, I, I was, yeah, I was happy with that. It got really close. Very, oh, <laughs> way that, too close. that was like too close for comfort yeah. on them. But, uh, I think, um, yeah, there's a, a lot of interesting, you know, stories that went on, uh, Magnus who, who went down with Greasy. I kind of wrote them off, but Magnus yeah. is a hell of a player and I, I'm glad they found Flakes who, who's been killing it in the one scene. Yeah. Probably. They, Top they three were... ones player. And uh, they were on fire. <laughs> yeah, they did really well. I was I was very happy to see Complexity make it in. Same, same. Uh, it was one of those I, things, I, too, though, that I, I was also a little bitter because I was like, Veloce also really deserves it. <laughs> it was yeah. it was like it was rough because it was like among the EU teams. I was like, aside from Mouse Sports, like all three of you deserve RLCS. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. well veloce is interesting because i i always questioned uh the mentality of that team uh niels cook obviously season four mvp in rlcs yeah kind of a surprise he was on the fifth place team and then they picked up marky duda and then they just slid right down i think mark that was a bad pickup um although the player you placed wasn't wasn't that uh incredible uh, in yeah. the rlcs scene um they kind of slid out of our. They went to RLRS. They even slid out of that. Yeah. And they got back in with uh, with Freaky. So, I questioned their commitment, and for them to go seven zero was great. Mm. But I think when the actual crunch time happened in that game seven, they completely lost the plot. Yeah. And you could see that there was that. What everyone everyone knows with that one chance. But there's a wide open goal. Yeah. It's one one if you score, and Neil Scott cuts right from the side, and he goes, "Whoop! I'm taking that," and yeah. they miss. <laughs> that so was, that was rough. Uh, and like that is the thing, though, is it's when push comes to shove, can you perform? Um, mm-hmm. And so I was I was happy to see the bricks pulling it off, though. Uh, it, again, it shows that they're able to hold up under pressure, uh, and they'll they'll do a good job. So. Um, was pretty pretty happy to see them stick around. Um, and Veloce, I think that I think that next season they'll probably make it through. They they Hopefully. did so well this RLRS. Like I was, I like when you're an undefeated team. Like I was fully expecting them to come through. Granted, this season showed us a lot about you can be first in your stuff, but you're probably not going to make it through. <laughs> <laughs> right. Between yeah, that- them, OCE, and. Uh, Sam, like these high level teams, just top one or two, you you're not gonna you're not guaranteed. Right, right. It's a bit bitter. Uh, I also <laughs> remember it was in season one of RLRS, the Fibion team, which was uh Chicago, Zolhe, and Hato, they yeah. went seven though, and they didn't make it either. Um and that was a bitter experience for them. I thought it was a little inequitable as well. So yeah. But it is what it is. This is the format. Yeah. It's, it's what we got. That. It's what we got to work with. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you got any other tidbits you want to throw in on these guys? Uh, the Bricks. Um, obviously, one, WSOE. I watched them play in DreamHack. They finished top eight. Took Vitality to, to the last game. I think yeah. it was game five or game seven. I forget yeah. what best of it was. Uh, they looked good. And then they started playing in league play and they obviously had that issue in, in week one where they dropped yeah. the match with triple trouble a uh, speed being in uh orlando on vacation with his parents yeah that uh, was that was just a brutal start right there i was like right Ugh, that sucks it's, and they had a a horrible time in league play uh, i thought the players looked disconnected to each other they didn't have that uh the compaction i think the coaching was uh, also a factor I think anytime a coach joins a team and he gets too involved in what they're doing yeah. and he starts saying, hey, you guys should do this rotation or for this rotation, and the players start taking it as gospel or it messes with their instinctual yeah. movements, it has a potential to really um, bring down the level of play. Yeah. 
And we saw it all over NA and EU. Uh, TSM yeah, also for, brought in a coach. For EU especially, because yeah. like EU, EU was probably the most surprising to me, just because um, among like the bottom four teams, three of them are recent like huge tournament land tournament winners. Mm-hmm. And so for them to just basically fall into the bottom half was just like mind blowing to me. I mean, you got, like you said, the bricks won WSOE TSM won the e- last E league. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, Dignitas won dream hack. And it was like, how do you go from being on top of the world winning these to bottom of league play? Not even right. none none of those three teams are making it to land this time. Like that was I think the most crazy part to me was these guys who did so well are we're not seeing them on the screen this time. I mean, they might be shown in the audience, but they're not going to be on the stage. Right. And uh, I, I was never impressed with that Dignitas win, actually, at DreamHack. Uh, I'm a big fan of Turbo's game. I've studied his game, uh, uh, Violent Panda as well. I think Yukio was a weird pickup for them, very weird. I thought so, too. He, he didn't fit. K-Dop is one of the best balancing players um, in in the world, yeah. and he really balances the tendencies of... Uh, a violent panda who's a, who's a very aggressive player and then you have uh turbo who's very similar to kato yeah and to go to for someone who uses a ton of boost in yukio you know you, you could see him he'll get that 100 boost and he'll oh, yeah. carry the ball all the way down and then he'll then he'll have nothing and uh someone's that aggressive they they really struggled and it put turbo in terrible positions on defense yeah and so like for these teams i'm wondering what ta- what types of changes will it see for them uh, in this off season, um, going to be really interesting, right? Uh, Dignitas. Just one thing I want to mention: they've had this monkey on their back since the last RLCS um, Grand Final against C9, and they had the same question we were talking about in NA, where they're like, "How do you deal with a compact defense?" Mm-hmm. They have no answers for that to this day yeah. when, when they play against those the C9, you know, compact, ultra compact teams. Mm-hmm. that absorb pressure and then they go they spring forward on the transition yeah i mean that's what they faced against um psg and psg are very very compact team. Mm, yeah they really are psg surprised me this season yeah uh I'll, you never know what you're gonna get you might get second place you might get sixth place they don't really we... control games but they stay in games <laughs> and uh we we don't know man that's <laughs> It's going to be interesting. Um, we'll, we'll take that moment and we'll pivot over. Uh, we'll continue talking about them, but we're just going to make it a transition. So we're going to talk to you guys about the uh, new groups for land that have been announced. Um, I'm going to pull that up here on my screen for you guys so you all can see it at home as well. Um, but so these are the new groupings that they have released to us recently. So group A is NRG. PSG and Ints Esports. Uh, we'll we'll go through them one by one. So Group A, what are your thoughts on that one? Uh, don't know much about Ints. Is that the team from uh, South America? Right? They were the second place team from Sam, if I'm not mistaken. Right. I think NRG and PSG are gonna walk that group. Uh, NRG definitely so taking first place. Yeah, NRG. That's no question for me. Uh, PSG, I think, will definitely take it as well. I mean, again, we don't know too much about these Sam teams, but, I mean, like, I brought it up in the last episode, too, but, like, they just, they don't have the experience of playing such high-level teams yet. And right. until they get that experience under their belts, they're not really going to be able to do much, I don't think. I'll, I'm, I'm hoping I'm, presently, I'm pleasantly surprised by them, and they do really well. Um, I would love to see an upset. That'd be the coolest thing ever. Uh, but I just don't see it with this group. Right. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot about players talking about LAN experience. Uh, I had a much smaller experience, but I got to play on Renegade Cup, and I remember playing against, it was in front of like 12,000 people, and yeah. my adrenaline was through the roof, my hands <laughs> were imagine. sweating, I, uh, you know, my heart rate, because I, I wear a Fitbit, it was like 110, 120, it was, it was crazy. And... All while playing Rocket League. Right, and I've heard a lot of players say, hey, you know, I play in league play. It was like that for the first few games, and then I got used to it. 
But then when they go to land, it's the same experience where they're, they're in front of yeah. the stage. It's completely new. It's uncomfortable. They have heart rates of 120. People are panicking on stage Yeah. Uh, before they really get into it. So we, sh- we shall see how these two these teams uh, fare. Uh, I don't expect much from the, the new newcomers. But uh, no, if they I... overperform, well, you know, I- I'd love to see one of these teams in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not holding out hope for them, but we'll, we'll see how that one pans out. Uh, moving over to Group B, that's going to be Renault Vitality, G2 Esports, and Out of Order. Out of Order is the team um, that got second at OCE. They're actually the ones that beat out Icon, the former Tainted Minds team, for that position. Yeah, that... I think Out of Order has a potential to upset G2. I don't think they can upset Vitality. That was that's what I keep hearing from people too, and like I kind of agree, um, but I also kind of disagree. Like I'm thinking that this group this group stage deal is gonna change how some of these teams play. Uh, I'm hoping that it these teams that kind of choked earlier on in the double elimination bracket. I'm hoping that switching over to a group stage is gonna be um, better for them and give like right. they'll perform better with that. That's my hope at least. Well, if you look at that schedule, it's Vitality versus G2. I think if Vitality win that, G2 are like, ooh, we're, you know, yeah. five, zero Backs and five the, the last wall. three. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, I, I, that's like exactly it. Is like in these group stages, like you pretty much just need to win one series. That's it. Mm-hmm. And you're good. <laughs> they have this thing hanging over them. Because I watched uh, on CJCJ's stream, they had Chrome and Jazzo. And Jazzo keeps talking about... Yeah, we don't know how we're going to look at land because we're 0-4. And, and it was like something that's hanging over them. Yeah. Uh, everyone's acutely aware of it. They've lost. They've crashed out the last two lands. And so they'll be realistically 0-5 in the last three lands. Can they change that? Yeah. You can get the win against inferior opponent. But. Well, this is, this is the first time that we're seeing Chicago on a team. So um, hopefully that's a welcome enough change that maybe they'll be okay. But... Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I'm not sure what I'm going to expect out of that one. Uh, I kind of go in like 60-40 there. Like, I think G2 has a 60% chance. Out of order, probably a 40%. Just really depends on, like, if G2 show up. Right. So, well, that one, um, I think that's one of the groups where the uh, non-NAEU teams have a chance. Uh, mm-hmm. So, Group B, I think, has possibilities. Group A, I don't think there's any chance. Um, moving over to Group C, we've got Renegades. Uh, that is formerly known as the Chiefs for OCE. Uh, and then we also have FC Barcelona and Rogue for Group C. This one is kind of a toss-up for me. I I think Barcelona's going to pass through. And then Rogue and Renegades, I'm kind of like, I don't know how that one's going to go. <laughs> yeah, that one's... That's going to be a really fun last match. Uh, yeah oh that one's gonna be so intense yeah especially because like i expect fcb to take the first two (laughs) right right um i don't know renegades without drip a looked a little lot lot weaker but then again i i always write them off every season especially last season i was like oh they lost um uh they lost jake and they replaced him with combi and they finished fourth (laughs) and they keep improving so you never know they're they're such there's such an animal when it comes to world championships. So maybe they finish oh, yeah. third and do one better. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> that one, I'm like, ooh, I really don't know. It depends on, I think it's going to depend on what version of Rogue we get. I think mm-hmm. that's mainly what's going to come down to is what, kind of like G2, like what what Rogue are we getting? Are we getting one where like they're all, all systems go or are we getting one where they're just kind of sleeping through it? Um, I don't know. Yeah. With with Crow, I know there was a lot of pressure when he was playing on G2 because he was seen as that like the, the weakest link. I, I don't know Which if I agree with that. Which is surprising because I thought, I always felt he was the strongest link. And like on the Rogue team, he is the strongest link. Mm-hmm. And like, I always find it interesting when people say like he's the weakest link because I'm like, I just don't agree with that. Yeah. I mean, me neither. But it, he was a, it was an easy target. Yeah, everyone, everyone on that team was like massively popular. They had their own fan bases, and uh, Jane As being such an offensive powerhouse, it was really between Rizzo and uh, and Kenobi. And maybe that's a popularity content. Yeah, but Crow comes in and he goes, 
hey, uh, I'm the leader of this team. I'm going to pull you guys up. I've already done that. This is everything we do here as a bonus. I think they play with not a lot of pressure. And they have they have the potential to make it very far in this tournament. So you think I'm quite so? high on them. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping. I'm I'm a crow fanboy, so I'm hoping. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> um, so we'll move over to group D last but not least. Uh, and that is going to be low-key esports, the number one uh, seed from Sam. Uh, then we have Cloud9 and Triple Trouble. This one is another one where I'm kind of like, I don't see the, I don't see the Sam team making it out. Mm. I yeah. think, I think Cloud9 is just too powerful at LAN. I like they do really good job at LAN like every single time, and then Triple Trouble. Um, they've just been playing so well throughout league play that I, it's kind of hard for me to want to root against them because I did several times and they proved me wrong multiple times. They proved me wrong enough now to where I'm like, I'm kind of with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that'd be interesting. It kind of brings me back to, I think it was RLCS season three when Oceania was, uh, introduced and everyone was saying no team's going to win a game and. Chiefs rock or Alpha Sydney back then. They rock up and then they beat Denial, which is Latimer's team. Yeah. And Corrupted G. And, uh, and it was a surprise, but it wasn't like the highest quality match. And I don't know what Sam is going to bring to the table. Is, is someone going to bogey either way to one win? I don't yeah. think it's going to be Ints. It's probably got to be low key, but. Well, and that's the thing, too. Those is, are tough um, opponents. <laughs> low, key, low key was actually second in league play for Sam. And Ince was third in league play. Erodium was the number one team out of league play, and they m failed in the regionals and uh, ended up losing their position there. So, like, these aren't even technically the best teams, like, on a consistent basis in Sam. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that that also puts a bigger question mark for me. Right. I'm just like, in a five week period there was a team that still did better than both of them in terms of consistency and so um but again like that lack of land experience like you talked about earlier like i think that's going to be the huge problem that these two are going to have to deal with uh right. and actually out of order too because out of order hasn't gone to any lands um like like renegades and icon have both been invited to dream hacks and stuff Whereas Out of Order was just like a no nobody team, so they weren't, of course. Right. Yeah. They'll be up against it, but they have no pressure. And uh, teams like G2 have a ton of pressure. Uh, C9 yeah. as well. And you just got to bogey your way <laughs> to, to, <laughs> Pretty to much. one series win. You know, every you game starts at 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, you can get that one series win, man. You're golden. You're going to you're going to the next stage. Right. Uh, so I'm. I think that Group D. I want to say like Cloud Nine Triple Twelve have got it. Um, but I think there is a. I think there's a chance Loki could maybe surprise us and take down Triple Trouble. Mm -hmm. So I would I would say that the teams that have a chance to move on out of groups that aren't NA or EU out of order renegades and loki i think those are the only right. three i don't think it stands a chance no like <laughs> not they they were just they're already dropped in the coffin before right. they got there um but i mean it'll be interesting i'm excited to see how they play at least if anything even if they don't even if we end up somehow with an all naeu final bracket i don't expect that but if we do like it'll, it'll have been cool getting to see a bunch of new teams because now we're only seeing one new returning or one returning team from those regions yeah that is exciting so that's gonna do it for uh the group stage deal did you have anything else you wanted to add to that about just in general or anything no i'm just excited to be uh to be watching yeah me too i'm gonna be <laughs> i can't even go so i'm just gonna be like watching on a car ride out to vacation with my family <laughs> <laughs> awesome so that'll that'll be a fun uh i'm sure my family will love me with my cheering um so we're gonna move on to the next bit of news the final piece uh the rlcs attendee item has been updated from the ninja pro wheels to the emerald pro wheels um that one was actually surprising i was i was actually surprised to see that they did this because i was like there were a lot of people complaining about it. we brought it up last week but um 
it was it was just surprising that they actually like kind of bit the bullet and were like, okay, we'll go change it. These look clean. There yeah, are not they a look, lot of good gold wheels. They look this. really good. Like I was sitting there, I was like, man, if there's tickets, like I might buy one just for the wheels, even though I can't go. <laughs> I like the uh, little subtle nod to the alpha boost in the background because not a, yeah. obviously they're mega expensive, but everyone uses a Bacchus mod or Alpha console. Oh yeah. And so these wheels uh, will be great. I actually have a gold setup for my red car, and the, oh, I'll really? definitely be rocking these. Yeah. Oh, nice. So are you actually going to be at LAN? No, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna be staying this time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm excited though. Those were those are like really nice wheels. I was like, okay, that's a really nice change you made. <laughs> <laughs> that's a solid upgrade. Um, but I think it, it kind of comes more to the point though of like it was just surprising that Psionics actually like went back and changed this. I honestly was like, I think they're just gonna kind of stick with their guns on this one and just be like, no, this is what we made. This is what you're taking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so for them for them to actually like go through and make the change like i was pretty happy about that um i'll actually so i'm gonna read this real quick off their blog post about it quote when we initially announced the in-game item that rocket league championship series world championship attendees would receive we believed that we had released a wheel the community would love to have on their battle cars Based on the feedback we've gathered over the last week, we realized the Ninja Pro wheels didn't live up to the standards our attendees expected. In short, we hear you. That's why we went back to the drawing board and came up with a new design that we believe better captures the World Championship experience and what our fans expect. So without further ado, we'd like to introduce the Emerald Pro wheels, end quote. Um, I, I kind of like that they are just like, we messed up and like we, we hear you guys. Y'all don't like this. And so this is this is the fix. Yeah, yeah, it's a good bit of PR. Uh, I I do like it when uh, companies come out and say, "Hey, we hear you." Yeah, You're, we're gonna fix it. Uh, there's a little quote at the bottom that says, "Gone are the Ninja Pros, and in are the Emerald Pros." <laughs> <laughs> so I guess they just got tossed in the trash heap. Or I I imagine yeah. so. I like yeah. I it, that was one of the wheels. Like I saw it and I was kind of like, I don't know why. I don't think I would ever use them if I got them. Like to be honest, mm -hmm. I'd probably use them for like a day, and I'd be like, oh. Back to my esports items. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but so that is going to do it for our new segment today, guys. Uh, we're going to now move on into the roster shuffle. So our roster stuff, uh, we got four bits on that today. Uh, the first one is the, this one was like announced right after our podcast last week. So that's why it's on this one now. Um, Pittsburgh Embers officially drop their roster after their poor RLRS run. Uh, I'm not surprised at all after all the crap they went through. Uh, not surprised in the least. Yeah, they have a terrible reputation stemming back from... They, they're actually the, the former Fibion. Yeah, no. I know. rebrand. Whenever we first picked up the news about them picking up a roster, like we had the full discussion on that one of like... I don't know about having these guys back in here. <laughs> <laughs> who, who opened the door for these guys to come in? Right. <laughs> um, so, I mean, really not surprised to see that happen, though. Um, they they just missed out on mm -hmm. that. Uh, it was like they just... Like, the series played out just properly so that RBG took the spot over them. Yeah, it was a game five... If Embers win, they stay in, RBG's out, and they lost in overtime. So it couldn't have gone any yeah. closer. Yeah, so uh, it was literally just like that one goal was the difference between them being there and not being there. Mm -hmm. they, so, they had the lead with like 25 seconds left, too. Yeah. So it was kind, uh, kind of a little bit of a choke there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I, I also kind of blame it on the fact that like they had that stuff happen before where... Uh, what's his name demonator, demonator said a bunch yeah. of stuff and i'm just like guys watch out what you say people are gonna come back for you on that stuff <laughs> um, that was a big yikes oh yeah that was a huge one for me i was like Ugh. it's like why would you say that ever uh but moving on to the next one uh afterthought is officially disbanded after their failed run in the rlrs league play as well um that one i was Whenever I was at the beginning of the season, I was like, afterthought or a top four team. And to see them be uh, sixth kind of surprised me. Yeah. 
they uh they dropped some games that they probably should have felt they should have won and yeah i thought they were they had a good chance to make it top four but yeah um, i mean i thought they did too and like so to see them have like dropped that much i was like dang like that's just that's so rough because i really was like counting on them to pull through mm. so uh, i think for shock will have had a good experience playing an rls i know he he felt like he should have made it before yeah. some things happen so it's good for him to get that experience but i think hato and um Tana tyler they're kind of stuck in this like we can get into rls but we can't stay in purgatory same yeah. with guys like you know previous manhattan roster they can get in you're still like, you can't in make a big enough splash, you yeah. can't quite get out of there right so no i feel you on that one uh, the next one, uh, the next roster news is uh, Seabass is teaming up with Prime Thunder and Soul Flares for DreamHack Dallas. Uh, you kind of told me a little bit about this one um, on like how you, you don't think this is a serious team. Yeah, so uh, I've I've never really talked to Prime, but I've known him in the scene for about three years because he used to be a Sarp VC player. A lot of experience. He grinded so hard with wonder to get into rlcs i remember they're trying so many thirds out these guys were like the dynamic duo yeah and um after he got kicked from FlyQuest, uh, which became rogue yeah um he i guess he just wanted to team with friends you know prime soul flares matt these guys were all friends i guess they went hey you know I i'm sick of the pressure or i just want to find something fun or whatever yeah uh, and they had a run together. Soul Flares is, you know, there's no question that he's a, he's a weaker, inferior player to those guys. Yeah. Prime being an RLCS level talent. So, so I'm, I'm interested to see how far they make it. Um, interesting that Seabass wanted to team up with them. So, we'll... Yeah, I, I think it's for fun. We yeah. ran into Ranked the other day, and they're, they're you know, they're a solid team. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think they're a bad team. When you, if you have Seabass and Prime Thunder, I think you're still a good team. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, just interesting that they would uh, have Soul Flares with them um, and everything. But And then moving on to the final bit of roster news, uh, this one also concerning Seabass. Uh, Seabass and Jacob are both apparently trying out for RBG. Uh, I didn't actually know this until you had like kind of talked to me a little more about it. So, it seems to be a huge uh, misunderstanding in the, in the bubble scene about what Jacob's role is. <laughs> yeah, um, huge misunderstanding. So, in short, there was an announcement right after RBG stayed in RLRS. Uh, RL there was an announcement that they're kicking Astro. And in the same tweet, they put they photoshopped Jacob's face uh with the NRG jersey onto onto their image and say, hey, we're, we're we want to announce that we picked up Jacob for DreamHack Valencia uh, qualifiers, and everyone just saw it as, oh, wow, you know, RBG picked up Jacob, set stone. I had to actually talk to Aeon, who's on the team, and he said, oh, you know, there, there's been no contracts. This is just a trial situation. We're also trying out, you know, Seabass. In the end, Jacob couldn't even make these qualifiers, so uh, they they rolled with Seabass in that one. So yeah. they're both trying out. Other, I think there's a few players they want to try out. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't pulled up here so we can see like what the wording is. As we prep for the off season of Rocket League, we have decided to make a change to our roster despite the top four result. Our roster for the at DreamHack RL Dallas and Valencia Pro Circuit events will be Aeon, Rapid, and Jacob, and that's it. So that's. <laughs> You're you're right. That's like that's that's smart wording there. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was definitely ready to like. We even jumped on it. We're like, oh, Jacob's joining the team. Cool, great for these guys. Uh, so to go back and see that after you brought it up, I was like, ah, oh, man, was... <laughs> you pull the fast one on me. You pull the fast one on me. The RPG. Truth. Yeah, te technically true, technically not. <laughs> it's it's in limbo, just like a lot of these other players. <laughs> right. uh, so, guys, that is going to do it for the roster shuffle. So, we're now moving on to our freewheeling section, where we're just going to kind of shoot around, discuss whatever the heck we want. Um, and I know you wanted to discuss uh, coaches and coaching performance for the RLCS this year. Um, so while, while you kind of kick us off on this on like some of your thoughts, because you being a coach yourself, um, 
you you've got a lot of thoughts on this i can tell right um so i actually come from a soccer background and soccer has the huge advantage of being having 150 more than 150 years of history yeah. um tactical innovations uh changes to the meta and how um, the game had developed and we're seeing this kind of work in a fast pace in rlcs so this was the first season we saw teams decide hey we want to uh hire coaches dignitas put out an actual job posting i remember asking for a junior analyst saying hey oh, you're they gonna actually put out a job team. posting i didn't know yeah that. it was a, so that's, that's actually what snasky applied for so and that's the position he got but then okay. they gave him the head coach title because uh, obviously that switcheroo it, <laughs> I, I saw the job posting it looked a little interesting i know one of our coaches he applied for the position very qualified um but they they went for someone with you know who was a player had, yeah. the, had the respect um, the baseline level of respect that you need if you're not you, you, if you're not coming in with like huge tactical plan for the team yeah so i think um in terms of coaching one of the big questions you have is how do we get three players to think in each moment of the game whether it's offense or defense or in the transitions in between how do you get these teams to have every single player understand uh what the role is in that situation what are the principles that drive their be team behavior how do we organize in this phase and a lot of coaches don't see that yet they're still in this phase of saying hey we're going to work on these specific patterns of play we're going to yeah. do these specific rotations and those things can really harm teams in the short run yeah and i think you gotta have that innovation right and you, you gotta you gotta account for the dynamism of the game the, the chaotic nature of the game this is as chaotic <laughs> as you can get oh yeah you know there's so many questions like at what point is possession given up is it the moment it leaves your car is yeah. it before if you understand that the if you throw it at the opponent they have to give it back um you know this adds difficulty for coaches in, in saying in developing you know a game model uh to organize their team so these coaches that came in i think jake did it right where he says I don't really do too much with the team. I like to play. I like to be a very hands-off coach. I like to allow for instinctual play, the dynamic nature of the game. Or some of these other more hands-on coaches, they're saying, "Hey, you and need Jake, to." Jake. Do... Jake is with who again? He is the coach for TSM. Uh, okay. Previous player for Chiefs. Yes. And... Okay, I remember now. I was like, Jake. I know. I know who this is, but I can't put where they're at now. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Right. And then you had um. Snasky, who in the interview before the uh, actual play-ins, uh, where the you know the top four qualify, <laughs> regional championships, there we go. Uh, he actually said he came in and was very hands-on. He found the team underperforming massively, and so he had to learn to to take his hands off a little bit, yeah, and have more of a discussion, not do a top-down coaching model, but more of a you know collaborative peer-to-peer -peer kind of thing, right, and. Uh, I find that it's very unnatural for a lot of coaches. A lot of coaches struggle with that. Well, it's uh, also it's also just because like I guess it feels weird because, um, and I kind of brought this up to you earlier of just like when you're in an esport, it feels weird, and I can imagine it feels weird on both sides, being the coach and being the one being coached, to kind of be feeling like you're being taught. Or trained by this person who's inferior in play to you um and so like i can understand like there's just that difficulty of trying to figure out like how how should this be approached um and it's it's interesting because i i know you're like you understand a lot of this stuff and you're very into the coaching side of things um and so just to hear the various different ways that a lot of these guys are trying to go about coaching is super interesting because i think they're trying to approach it in their own unique way um that they feel best works with that team and how receptive that team may be to some stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely um i think fireworks is a good example of uh you know he, he seems like a terrific man manager has the, the mental aspect of coaching down 
uh, very collaborative guy, but they didn't get the results they wanted. And I think um, in terms of this game being as chaotic as it is, you're looking to reduce risk, you're looking to control matches, uh, control the outcome of matches. And for that to happen, you need to be consistently creating uh, offensive opportunities, chances to score, not just chances, but really high quality chances. Yeah. That, and I think at, at the, this point in the coaching meta, coaches are coming in, they're saying, uh, they're putting band aid solutions on, hey, we're going to do this rotation. And how does that relate to the process of scoring goals, creating assists, uh, the assist assists, you know, opening up certain spaces on the field that, that creates those high quality chances? Yeah. So, that philosophy isn't in place yet, and so coaches, I don't think, are are going to perform until they really think about those. Things. Again, yeah. soccer, basketball, these are things that have been uh, studied in tactics uh, for the last 30, 40 years. Well, so. it's, it's that too, but it also comes with, like you were saying, a, it's a very high-speed game, and this... Like, that was one of the things you said earlier that I thought was interesting, because like I didn't think about it, was the fact of the question the basic question of when is possession given up like that's such a basic fundamental question but when you really think in the prospect of rocket league you're kind of like it's one of those things that like when you're playing like you instinctively know when you've given up possession Mm -hmm. but like in the process of like watching it or um coaching it i can see where it'd be difficult to really try and convey that because it's it's just very difficult to understand exactly when possession is fully given up, but it's not just that question. But that's just that's just the idea of there are a lot of really basic questions like that that I think coaches need to try and figure out how to answer, and right. that's going to be what helps elevate some of these teams because we'll have these basic questions answered. So that sets a foundation then for you guys as coaches to find a lot of success. Right. I think going along with that, that idea, there's actually another question I've never heard anyone talk about. But typically you have uh, three players all behind the ball, and the first man has the ball in his possession. How does he know when he's carrying the ball where his teammates are? Is that something he can know? Is that something he can have awareness of? Is, is it maybe does it come from like a certain principle of play that he knows his teammates are going to be there? Or is it he's actually physically looking at them with rear cam? You know, yeah. that's one of the, the things very difficult about this game is having that on-field awareness. I see a lot of players using the cameras now. Yeah. But... Now, I've seen the camera flicks, like, around mm-hmm. becoming a lot more prevalent. And really, in the... And, like, that's the thing is, like, it almost... Like, in my experience, this just feels like such an instinctual game built upon can you trust that your teammate is going to be doing exactly what they should be doing so like in the instance you're talking about i would say that yeah if you're carrying the ball it's not like in my experience it wouldn't be about knowing that they're there it would be in trusting that they're there trusting that they are where like you expect them to be y'all played enough that you can anticipate this person is going to be here and when you go to try and make that pass they're there to receive it for you and so it's it's just a lot of very instinctual and trusting very intangible type stuff here that Mm -hmm. like i can see why there's such a difficulty to come across coaching wise right yeah so even in that scenario uh there comes a question of do you want to be doing the same thing every single time it has to be tailored to what the organization of the opponent yeah. So if you're doing, if you're expecting a player to be there this time and they're not there, and maybe the situation calls for you actually to go towards the net, and you're you're busy thinking about where your your teammates are going to be, uh, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So these are also questions that uh that coaches have to deal. With. It's it's so broad. <laughs> yeah. There's no, so it's it's complexity. very broad and yeah. like it's one of those things that's like. I haven't really spoken to a lot of coaches, so talking to you is very interesting just because you have that kind of mental process that you're looking for that kind of stuff. And so it's it's really interesting just kind of getting that perspective because I I have never considered the idea of coaching, so I know nothing about the type of questions (laughs) I would be asking or like how I would even go about teaching someone like certain aspects. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, part of part of that comes from the fact that I am a lower level player. I'm not GC or anything. 
Um, but even if I'm working with lower level players, like even teaching some of the basic stuff uh, is still to an extent like you just kind of have to feel it out is how I would almost go about it. But I know that that's like in terms of coaching, that's not how you can go about things. You have to be able right. to say A to B to C uh, and help form this kind of uh, decision making tree uh, in their head so that like, okay. I'm going in for the carry, coming in for the challenge. How should I kick this out? Should I let them win the challenge and let it kind of absorb back in our half and fall back out? Do we know to do that? There's just there's a lot of stuff to really process in that. Right. Yeah, I mean, Decision Making Tree is an amazing tool. So, I yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that's actually what we do. <laughs> I, I, I imagine it had to be something like that because you can't, yeah. you can't just say like, okay, let's go into – uh, play A as we're taking it down the field. Like you just don't have that option in Rocket League, right? Uh, and so like I can I can see that there's a huge challenge for you guys as coaches. Um, but I'm I'm excited to see how it develops, and I'm excited to see what types of role coaches start to bring into things. Um, and I I one of the things that I saw in the Chrome and Lawler podcast. Uh, deal earlier was they were talking about having coaches like on stage and stuff with players like how do you feel about that um yeah i mean sounds great i think you need that um objective analysis especially when you have so much adrenaline when you're playing on stage it can cloud your judgment it's very hard to be in the moment um and not think about you know oh i want to get off the stage or i want to win this match or it would be nice to win this match and you get distracted yeah uh having those coaches to really help the team focus on what's important and just be kind of a help mentally. Uh, I think it's very, very important. Yeah. It would be great. I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes, man. And uh, I think that you, you've got a lot going for you in that round, I think. And I'm, I'm so interested to talk. I definitely want to like sit down and talk with you more about it sometime. Like I want to have you on again and like really kind of <laughs> just have a day where like we're just kind of like diving into this stuff a little bit more because it's really fascinating to me. Um, but uh, before we close it out, is there anything else you want to add here to coaching and stuff? You want to kick anything, any last information out for people? Uh, no, I mean, that was a, that was a great, fun conversation. Yeah, it's something I'm very passionate about. So. I can tell. I can tell you, like, yeah. you <laughs> that's that's what fuels you. You're ready to talk about it and you have a lot. You have a lot of Absolutely. thoughts on it. Uh, you're, you're like me once that's like your thing that like you obsess over, I can tell. Right. Uh, and I'm, I'm like that too. Like with all this playing with the rocket stuff, like I obsess over it and like, I could talk about it for so long. Um, mm-hmm. and so it's, it's always cool to meet people who have that similar passion where it's just something that really fuels them and drives them. So, um, that was definitely some good conversation with you, man. Uh, it was a lot of fun and we definitely have to, uh, have you coming on again. Uh, Thank you very much for joining us tonight, guys. Once again, please consider following us here on Twitch and all that jazz. I will be uploading this episode later on YouTube for anyone who missed today's live recording. So don't worry. You can go back and watch it all. Um, And then we will be back on Monday with our biggest launch pad tournament ever starting this Monday and all future launch pads going forward. uh, They're all going to be broadcast from a live studio uh, Coral Sword uh, is the name of the studio. So if you ever want to go take a look at that, we're going to be broadcasting from twitch.tv slash Coral Sword. Uh, go give them a follow because um, that's where we're going to be doing our Monday tournaments every single time. Uh, and then in commemoration of our partnership with them, that tournament is going to be a $150 prize pool. So buckle up, guys. It's going to be a big tournament for us. Um, and then we'll also have a second place prize unlike normal where we just say you snooze, you lose, first place wins it all. Um, and then before we go, Kev Pert, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, so some of you may know me from my YouTube, but I still do tutorials. I actually just came back recently. So you can find me at uh, Kev Pert Gaming. I think if you just type Kev Pert, you'll find me pretty easily. And uh, my Twitter is Kev Pert RL. So you heard it there, guys. Uh, and then also, if you want to follow me, uh, my tag is down below. I was an idiot and didn't change Kevperts for some reason. <laughs> I saw I saw a question in chat. I 
have it pulled up. I don't respond to it really. And they said, did he change his handle? <laughs> I just didn't change it. It didn't occur to me. Um, but so, yeah, guys, if you guys want to go check out Kempert, go check him out at those places. We'll also link those in the YouTube video tomorrow for you guys. Um, this has been Around the Scene presented to you by Playing With Rockets. I'm Ryan. That's Kev Pert. It has been our pleasure to have you guys with us. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you guys on Monday live from Coral Sword. Take care.